An angle grinder, an angle head grinder, whichever you call it, is a very, very versatile tool. And even though typically we think of angle grinders as being in fabrication of blacksmith shops, which they are, lots of different crafts and trades use them. An electrician will be glad to have one. A tile setter will have a diamond cutoff wheel and an angle grinder. A concrete man will have an angle grinder for smoothing and small removals. Um, log cabin builders use them. Chainsaw carvers will have them. You can't, there's a lot of things where if you've got an angle grinder, you're gonna cut time off of your project. And I've got some angle grinders. This is a rainbow herd. I mean, I've got one of most of the brands that exist, mostly accidentally. These two I bought intentionally. The yeah, the rest of them just sort of came. But today, we're gonna to unbox another DeWalt, a smaller one, and I'm gonna give you my initial impressions. And then once we kind of, I really don't really know what's in here. It's a four and a half inch paddle switch, small angle grinder. We'll open it up and see. I bought this, I mean, DeWalt did not give me this tool. And I bought this and I like it. I'll say right off the bat, oh, don't fall off of there, Black & Decker. Right off the bat that I think this is the most ergonomic and uh, balanced of the fleet. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, now six grinders. This one's about to die. And I don't just have these because I like tools. I have a lot of grinders because there are many different types of wheels and attachments and brushes that can go on a grinder. And depending on your project, you might need two or three or four of these different capacities where you're working at any given moment because you're going back and forth from process to process and you need a different gizmo on a grinder at each process. So your choice is bend over and pick up another tool ready to go or take off whatever the attachment is on the grinder you're using and thread the other one back on and use it and then stop and take it. So you, who wants to do that? So it's nice to have some redundancy if you're undertaking a project that's going to have a lot of different steps in it. And we're adding one more to the fleet. I picked up another DeWalt. The price was right. The ergonomic balance on this one is, I think, the best of the lot. And so we're going to see what this little four and a half inch paddle switch small angle grinder has got to say for itself. And I will not have used it yet. And maybe sometime we'll circle back around. But the details of tools are not near as important to me as the work you get done with the tool. So the first thing is made in the USA with global materials. Now, I don't know what that really means but I love to buy tools that are made where I live. So let's see what's in here. The, the uh, side handle, don't throw that away, like ever. Because sometimes, both for the controllability that you need to get the product you want, and for your own welfare, you need to be able to get two hands on it. Now sometimes this is just hopelessly in the way, and you take it off. Sometimes you may rig up a clamp in a vise that will hold this trigger on and you'll be able to use it as a stationary cutting tool. We'll talk about that later, but anyhow, the handle's good, it's got good gription, the diameter's right. This one's a little small, that's made for a smaller person, but it's a smaller grinder. Okay, paddle switch, little safety. Pretty well gotta have that. You don't wanna lay that on the bench and have it come to life and run out across the bench and fall on the floor or in the slack tub or something. So that little switch, now you'll cuss that from time to time, except that one works really good. Way to go, DeWalt. Okay, paddle switch, that's pretty good. I, uh, I get used to those. I've got one or two, where's another paddle switch? There's a paddle switch where the safety does not work near as well. So they did good. You know, you think you're buying a small angle head grinder and maybe you're a smallish person, that's great, but you, that's a, there's a long ways around there. I mean, that's, you know, that's like getting a hold of something. So be aware, if you have a small hand, you might want to get a trigger. Where's the lock? Here's the lock mechanism on the arbor. So that's pretty good. You can get your thumb right on there, get a full thumb on there. So most of the older grinders, like this little POJ, Black & Decker, it's got a little button right there. You get, yeah, I mean, you can't really bear down on that. It works, but this is, uh, that's a nice thing. DeWalt is thinking about usability. Good for you. Let me just point out that it's threaded on the other side. If you're a lefty or however the work is, you can put that on there. 
Now we come to the controversy, the guard. You gotta love a guard. You'll notice I have a dearth of guards on these other grinders. I'm not bragging about that. Really, it's bad judgment, but they do slow me down. But they do protect you. You know, this guard, I think, is supposed to rotate. Let's take this little collar off of here. The guard is oriented between you and where the friction is happening, where the sparks are discharging, and where the wheel will fly if it goes to pieces. Of all of these wheels, attachments, wire brushes, these little cutoff discs are arguably the handiest and the most dangerous. These things will fly apart because they're thin. I can flex that with my thumb. So if you're in a cut and you bind it in a cut and you crack off a piece, it's going to leave where it cracks off heading in some direction at about 60 miles an hour. There's a beautiful picture on YouTube someplace of a fellow that's got, oh, I don't know, maybe 20% of one of these stuck in his cheek. You don't want that to happen. What you really don't want to have happen is have it stick in your eyeball. Do as I say, not as I do, which is after all the definition of hypocrisy, and leave that guard on if you can. And if the time comes when you have to take it off to get into a particular spot, I mean, where if the only way you can get in there is like this, then take it off and lay it right next to where you're working and put it back on. Angle grinders live a hard life. They live in a hostile environment. I mean, they get dirty. Dirt doesn't matter, except an angle grinder is sucking its own dirt right back in onto its own brushes. You're throwing the, you know, the abrasive, whatever abrasive is on your implement, and the dust that you're pulling off the workpiece, not only are you sucking it into your lungs, but it's sucking it back in over the armature and around the brushes, and it's, it lives a hard life. And as I look at these, I realize, I mean, we have, a, we have a theme here. Oh, look at that. This old Black & Decker. Those have all been, you know, breaking off the edges of the handle. So this is not a buy once, cry once scenario. If you're gonna do a lot of work, especially in a metal shop with an angle grinder, it's going to die a slow, painful death. So you ought to have two or three. If you can justify it, and I'm sure you can figure out a way to justify this, boys, it is a tool. But not only can you have an assortment of tools close to hand, but when one of them does die, you can keep working. Now there's some value to that. If it's strictly a hobby, then don't spend your hobby money on redundancy in a tool because you're gonna, you know, it's a hobby. But if it's not a hobby, if it's somewhere near the next level, you ought to have a couple. Maybe you ought to have three and it will increase your productivity. I think this is going to be a nice tool, and I think I'm going to dedicate this to polishing. There's, there's a wide, wide range of just polishing discs that you can put on here for swords and, you know, final, final touches. As I look at these tools, two of these have been a real disappointment, and they have both been a disappointment because of the switch. Now, I can't be too profoundly disappointed because this came for free when I purchased a bunch of wire for my MIG gun or welding rod or something, it, it was just thrown in on the deal, so you can't complain about that. But this switch makes it almost unworkable. These thumb switches, if you don't learn anything else from this video, never intentionally buy an angle grinder with a thumb switch. Junk. This one came in a box of stuff I got at an estate sale or an auction or something, and this paddle switch is almost a two-hand, it's just, it works, but it's not great. So. The switches are probably the immediate obstacle. It's the log jam, it's the, it's the rock in your shoe when it comes right down to whether or not you're gonna like your angle grinder. This Makita has been a 20 year winner. This has been about a six year winner. This is probably a 30 year winner. I, I've dedicated this old boy to just cup stones because it's got power, like real power. And I pretty much just use this for resurfacing anvils. So these little collars slip over the arbor in order to enable putting on this type of a disc where it's captured by these collars and it's tightened up with this wrench. I mean, it works okay, it's slow, but it, re it kind of brings the disc back down towards the center line of the tool a little bit. I prefer to buy wheels, polishing wheels, polishing wheels, cup stones that are threaded, that'll thread right onto the arbor, but that's a discussion for a different video. If you're just gonna buy one tool for grinding and cutting and brushing in your shop,
probably a four and a half inch angle grinder is enough. The wide range of attachments means you can cut metal off, you can wire brush metal, you can remove stock, you can, you can polish, you can do just about anything you're going to need to do at an entry level. This little dandy was 69 bucks on Amazon, I think. I don't know how you can go wrong unless you have a small hand. If you think you might not be able to reach around that and operate that, then get something with a trigger and a little more refined grip. So I've been using this little guy off and on for a couple weeks now, and I'm just tickled with it. it it's tough, it's got bounce per ounce. I mean, if you're patient, you can do anything with this little grinder that you need to do. Now you can't always be patient, so it's nice to have a bigger grinder around, but these are amazingly effective across, across a wide range of projects in my shop. I missed, a, I, I was right on a couple of my initial evaluations and I missed one or two. I was right in how perfectly this little paddle trigger works. It is no problem at all to make that go and yet it's safe. I was right that the diameter of this handle is kind of a problem. I mean, but, I mean, nothing's perfect. It's a little awkward, but it works. And I'm, I think I'm going to use this probably in a vise most of the time anyway. And so if, if you guys would like to know how I put that piece of oak on there and how I've got that connected in the vise, let, put it in the comments. Let me know if, if you're interested. I'll make a video on that. But for sitting next to the anvil, for having kind of in a stationary position around the shop, for, for a wide range of tools that you can put on in a hurry, I don't think you can beat it. Oh, and here's the thing I missed. I don't... <laughs> Contrary to my example on my other angle head grinders, I doubt I will ever take this guard off because they figured out this system, which I didn't even notice when I opened it, of locking this in different positions very securely, very conveniently. Come on, click in there. Well, yeah, there it is. So you can get this out of the way and you can put it back to work in other positions. There, have I broken it? There. Anyway, it, the guard I think is gonna stay because you've, you can always get it out of your way and it's always there when you need it. Great innovation, great innovation. Seems like a fairly standard horsepower to weight ratio. I doubt it's gonna last forever, but boy, while it runs, it's a dandy. So I don't think you can go wrong. Doesn't cost much, does a lot of work, lots of utility. Way to go, DeWalt. Keep it up, and thanks for watching.